Hey, welcome to Chris Cast, episode 41. My name is Chris Abraham, and this is going to be a wacky episode because it'll either show you that I'm the most compassionate person in the world, in the world, or it will uh, reveal that I am detached from reality. Uh, both of which, and neither of which, may be true. It is sort of an and or 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 and and kind of thing, and we will discuss this after the break. Welcome back to episode 41. My name's Chris Abraham, and I like telling my best friend, Mark, that I believe, I believe everything. I believe everything is true. Uh, There's no such thing that I don't believe. And um, let me explain it. It, I mean, it's even more prevalent, prevalent now uh, because of my experience with aphantasia. Um, but I really didn't think about the fact that I believe everyone and everything, no matter what they tell me, until I realized that the best way to handle people with um, Alzheimer's is to indulge their narrative and their experience and their hallucination and their their knowledge of what is happening in their brain. Um, and if you do, and if you come out of sync with what they're experiencing in their brain, they will start to panic, they will freak out, and they will have uh, a very bad trip in their life, right? So if currently your grandparent or your parent is experiencing a world where they're identifying you as their partner and they're identifying themselves as living in 1972, um, it is really not worth your time or energy to spend any time trying to uh, explain that you are in fact the child or grandchild and that you are in fact living in 2020. Uh, This is even more relevant and uh, prevalent in the experience that were happening with uh, with Trump. I mean, very literally, it might be figurative, but for me, it's literal. There are people who, when you explain what your experience is of the Trump White House and America in the last four years, it is completely inconsistent and as disturbing to someone who has a an opposite experience of me, it is as traumatizing to them as it is to tell someone with Alzheimer's that they are in fact uh, detached from a timeline that I'm experiencing with their body in this reality. So my experience with their body in this reality is not 1972 and it is not in the role of their spouse. But if I try to convey my reality to them, uh, it can become very disturbing. I learned this from having alcoholic parents, right? Alcoholic parents who uh, lived in a rift between who they saw themselves as, who they deserved to be, who they were not. And and this this Alzheimer's, if you will, quote unquote, uh, had to do with the rift between who they were entitled or deserved or were owed to being and the life that they were living, which to them uh, was hellish, uh, inconsistent with their wants and needs. I don't know. Um, and I learned this at uh, Miriam's Kitchen where uh, no ma- I-, I learned this in college, really, when I would spend time uh, to the chagrin of girls I dated. I would kind of have a few beers, have a few drinks at odds and wander around to Roy Rogers and end up talking to a homeless dude there 
And he would tell me how he is Jesus and how he uh, was going to fly an F-18 and drop nuclear bombs and create Armageddon. And, you know, I, I used to assume that people were, um, whatever, telling stories. But then after committing to working at um, Miriam's Kitchen and realizing that mental illness exp- is, is a many sundry and uh, delightful thing, um, also could be very hellish, also not necessarily connected to my timeline or perception of reality. I realize that it's better off for me to embrace the belief systems of other people when I'm with them. When I'm with them, and it's not, it's not a con, it's not pandering, it's not indulgence. If you tell me that, you know, my mom told me a story about when she was drowning uh, in a lake, she heard, she heard um, angels singing in, in a choral formation. And then another time she told me that she got lost and ran into a handsome man who brought her back to a diner and that man never existed and she believes it was an angel. And my dad and Mary uh, saw UFOs and my dad saw um, ghosts. And my friend James um, heard heard ghosts in his grandma's room. Um, and my, you know, I can, I, there's any number of uh, the Hawaiian, the people in Hawaii that I know very much believe in Madame Pele. Uh, the Christians I know very much believe in, in uh, Jesus uh, the Christ and in God. And the Catholics I know believe very strongly in in Mary and the Holy Spirit. Um, Buddhists I know uh, believe uh, in their transcendent space and uh, Shinto, uh, Shintoists and um, Hindus. I mean, people have a very varied reality and, and who am I to... Who am I to second guess the reality? I mean, one of, and then to discover at 50 that I have this thing called aphantasia, which means that I have an inability, maybe I'm a robot, maybe I have the inability to uh, visualize in my brain. I have a, you know, the old joke is, um, um, I know we broke up, but, and I'll never see you naked again, but all I need to do to see you naked is to close my eyes. I can't see you naked ever again unless you're naked in front of me. Um, You're naked in front of me. If I don't have a photograph, I'll never be able to ever see you naked again. And I can't imagine what you look like naked. Um, I can't imagine anything. I. It's impossible for me, Chris Abraham, to have a um, um, a mind palace. I. If you describe a car to me, I do not see it in my mind's eye. If I've <clears throat> never seen that car before, you're going to have to compare it to a bunch of cars that I have seen in order for me to work it out in my knowing brain. Not in my seeing brain, in my knowing brain. Um, makes it extra hard to learn languages because I can't just go ahead and uh, and put flashcards into my flash drive that I can then refer to in my brain or in my mind's eye. I have to know them. I have to know the words. I have to, it has to be intrinsic. It has to be in my firmware. It can't be, you know, uh, in a flash drive or in memory. Um, so, so if you tell me that you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and that he, and that you talk to him, I have, I have, I had a Mormon friend who, uh, told me that she talks to, she talks to God and she talks to Jesus. And uh, when I queried her saying, well, you know, everybody prays who believes in God. Everybody prays. It's a one-way street. She said, no, I very much have an interactive relationship with my God. Like I talk to him. He talks to me. I talk to him. I talk, he talks to me. Um, I would never consider that to be crazy talk. 
I would just be envious that uh, in the same way that people around me tell me that they have visions of, literal visions of sugar plums dancing in their head, that they literally uh, can see um, sheep when they're counting them. Me, you could just say count to anything because all I'm doing when I'm trying to get to sleep is counting. One sheep, two sheep, three sheep. Not, oh my God, look a sheep, I will count it. Um, so any number of other ways. Uh, I even, even down to the point where I believe that we're experiencing the same world in different ways. So for example, I live in a very gentle world where nobody ever fights me, nobody ever mugs me, nobody ever yells at me, nobody ever insults me. It's an extremely gentle world. And I used to explain that away by saying that I'm six foot three, uh, 300 pounds, and um, white cisgender male. But when I was in Hawaii, there was this dude who had a very dangerous world he was always getting his ass kicked. He was always getting mugged. In Hawaii, he was always getting mobbed by local guys who wanted to kick his ass. He lived a terrible life. And um, one day we were walking down... Uh... Oh, I don't remember. Um... Hey, Google. What street is St. Louis School uh, in Honolulu on? Wailai Avenue? According to Wikipedia... St. Louis School, located in the neighborhood of Kaimuki in Honolulu, Hawaii, is a historic Roman Catholic college preparatory school for boys. It was founded in 1846 to serve the needs of early Hawaiian Catholics in the former Kingdom of Hawaii. That's where I went to high school. Very proud. Anyway, we were walking down uh, Wailai Avenue, and uh, out of nowhere, this crazy guy across the street, after just talking to him about how my life is very placid and safe and and while not well no extreme heidi heidi highs i mean i live like a monastic monk as opposed to a what what else but i live you know monastically i live uh money to money anyway he lives he told me that his life is a constant torment and we were walking together side by side there was a crazy guy across the street. Uh, he looked crazy. He looked mad. Um, he looked over, saw both of us, sprinted across the street, like full speed across Wailai Avenue, and like attacked my, attacked my friend. Knocked him over, started beating him to shit. I pulled him off, uh, flung the guy aside. We kind of wiped ourselves off, patted ourselves off, and the guy had never seen, never, never seen the guy before. So, you know, in the same way that I don't have Trump derangement syndrome, and I don't believe that Trump is a despot or a, um, or in any way is trying to dismantle democracy. I believe that, uh, He's just a bad president, democratically elected, should have gotten more respect, didn't earn any more respect, and now he was uh, arguably voted out because there are a lot of people who, when they see him, are so, like, they literally, they, they see the devil, they see a monster, they see the end of American democracy, they see... Um, fraud and and whereas on the other side of the delusion, and I'm, I hate to use delusion because, like I said, I believe everybody. There's the the right, which is completely convinced that this is a Chinese Communist Party coup, and that this is the onslaught of communism, and in the guise of of academic Marxist feminism and Marxist black theory under the guise of academia, under the guise of gentle Western socialism, but in fact is a, is a single-minded take, takeover by uh, the global communist party. 
I don't see either of those things happening. All I see is four years, might be fraud, he might have been reelected, but it's better off for me to not have all my friends going through conniptions. So let's just give the presidency to Biden. Um, whether or not there's deep fraud, there's been deep fraud before, there'll be deep fraud again. Uh, America's not perfect. It's pretty fraudulent and despotic and fascistic, even, you know, even with a St. Obama or St. Carter in the White House. So I don't see it either way. Um, then again, you know, COVID's been very gentle to me. And when I died, I only died for a minute. I didn't die for real. And, um, you know, I don't live an admirable life. I don't know uh, anybody who wants to live my life, but I'm pretty amused by it. And so um, I believe what you believe. I believe what my buddy Matt believes. Or... I don't personally believe that, but I believe him that he believes that. I believe that he has this amazing experience of magic and symbology and spirit. Um, I personally get what I like to call God winks all the time, but I think that's just because I live in a sim. Um, I don't have, I haven't spoken to God I haven't spoken to Jesus, I haven't spoken to Buddha, I haven't spoken uh, to uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him. I haven't had any visitations by my mother, father, grandfather, grandmother, anybody. Um, I haven't seen anything spooky except there's a little freaking mouse living in this apartment that I need to trap. Uh, unless it's a phantom mouse. But, you know, at the end of the day, I will believe you. I will not pander to you. I will believe that your experience in the world is very much your own. Which means I should definitely give more compassion to my friends who are all wigging out and have wigged out and shown the worst behavior. Oh my God, the worst, like 10 times worse than all these deplorables have shown. I mean... All the way down to riots and looting and fires and and burning cop cars and and attacking military men and police officers and uh, it's just so awful. Uh, but that's my perception of reality. Your perception of reality might have shown all of those protests as being uh, peaceful and respectful and lovely, uh, akin to. Uh, the narrative of how uh, the MLK sit-ins and peaceful, peaceful protests were uh, portrayed as. So, all I do know is that apparently I feel like reality is extremely plastic and flexible and that uh, it, in many ways, uh, curates, your, uh, curates itself to each particular person's vibration, uh, intention expectation, culture, programming, fear. I don't know. Uh, I'd like to see all those things. I would even like to just see stuff in my head. But uh, that's not in the cards for me. And in terms of in the cards for me, I would need to have physically cards in my hand because I cannot, I cannot do that amazing thing that lovely Beth did in the Queen's Gambit, which is to play, uh, to play chess, inverted chess on the ceiling, with my mind. If I were to close my eyes, I can't even visualize a rook or a bishop or a pawn or a king or a queen. I just can't. Or a knight. It's just very frustrating. So, there you have it. I have, uh, I like to say that um, um, my life is very similar to when I, when I discovered Murakami's Wind Up Bird Chronicles. I'm like, that's my life. But it's, uh, it's not, I mean, I wish it were more 
uh, spooky cool. Like, like uh, I mean, I think I remember when I was a kid, I had these, th- there was this kind of nefarious D&D game going on in my head with people that I met on a hike through the falls. Um, I forgot the name of the falls on Oahu. And then I met this guy and he said he was going to be a Dungeon Dragons and that he would get together with all these D&D players, but while we were asleep in our, in our dreams, and it freaked me out, and I remember, and I do have extremely uh, vivid, colorful dreams when I do remember them, and I recall as a child thinking that they were r- prophetic, or at least, um, or at least they would result in, in powerful deja vus, but apparently deja vus are only some exotic Jungian type of symbology brain chemistry stuff. So I guess in order to maintain my sanity after all this gabbing, I have to say that it all just comes down to brain chemistry. And that, uh, but still, if you ever tell me you want to share something with me about your strange reality, I'll totally believe you. Uh, and it's not a condescending thing. It's not I'll fake believe you. Seriously, if I ever tell the story, I will not start the story with my crazy friend. I will start the story with my friend saw... Ooh, you know what? I saw some pretty cool stuff in Nepal. But that might have just been the oxygen or the exotica or I just think that place has got crazy energy maybe if I move back to Hawaii I would have more of a psychic uh, um, experience of life because man when I was in Nepal things got pretty psychic but I don't know if I believe in that stuff either because to be honest I haven't had any first-hand experiences of, of psychicness um and I've been listening to a lot of podcasts that spend a lot of time debunking um, the spiritualism and, and theosophy of the, of the modern world and of Russia and of uh, 19th century America and all that other fun stuff. So um, aside from that, I listen to a lot of Coast to Coast AM because I love that kind of stuff. But I've never seen a ghost or at least... An ethereal, uh, translucent ghost. Um, and like I said, the only thing that's haunting me is this little freaking baby mouse that I got to trap. Uh, and on that note, we will move to the break. Welcome back. Thanks for listening. My name is Chris Abraham. This is episode 41 of Chris Cast. It's actually the, it's actually November 16th. This is the second podcast of the day, but I'm going to post it tomorrow on 17 November. So, um, so you'll have to wait for 24 hours for all y'all to realize what a crackpot I am. Um, I am the definition of keeping my mind so open that my brains fall out. Come back after the message and I'll close up. Welcome back. This is episode 41 of Chris Cast. Who knows, you know? I um I swear one time I did see Madame Pele 
as a relief on the side of a caldera with my mom. And I personally believe that any homeless woman or old hag woman that I see on the side of the street or whoever asks for money, no matter how old or how young, I just assume she's Madame Pele. So while I'm not very generous with the cash I don't carry, I try to be as nice as possible with anybody who is, seems like a, an impoverished woman of any color, of any age. Because I assume that's Madame Pele checking on me to make sure that I haven't become a Washington D douchebag. Which, of course, I'm a Washington DC douchebag. So sorry, Madam. Madam Pele. My name's Chris Abraham. You can reach me at chrisabraham.com. You can email me at chris at abraham.su. You can text me at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. You can call me at that number, but don't expect to pick up unless we have a scheduled date. And that is at calendly.com slash chrisabraham slash 30. And you can reach me at Chris Abraham on Twitter, at Chris Abraham on Instagram, at Chris Abraham on YouTube. Uh, boogity boogity boo. Um, LinkedIn.com slash in slash Chris Abraham. Alexa, stop. And uh, what else? I'm at Chris on No Agenda Show or No Agenda Social if you want to find me that way. And I think we're done. Uh, Appreciate your time. I don't know if I said anything interesting. I said a lot of stuff. Um, And uh, oh, by the way, if you could share this podcast, uh, like it, um, thumbs up it, subscribe, uh, comment, review. Give me stars anywhere you uh, get your podcasts. Um, and I'll talk to you soon. Mahalo. Uh, a biento. A tout à l'heure. Hasta la vista. Hasta luego. And uh, tschüss. And ciao. And mahalo aloha. Alfie de Zane.